So this is my previous NES Classic setup, which I put dozens of, upon dozens of systems in. And I really don't want to have to take the unfathomable, incredulous amount of time necessary, and not to mention the painstaking patience that we require to move these all over to my current SNES Classic. But I'm going to show you a very, very easy way to convert your NES Classic setup into your SNES Classic setup. So I'm going to exit this hatchery and I'm going to move over into the new one where my SNES Classic is set up in. Now one thing to note, with the new hashi, you could go to your settings and click your console type. It's set to SNES Classic Mini right now. And it's also set to auto detect. So if you try going to NES Classic Mini, it's going to revert right back to the SNES Classic. So I'm going to power the system off to bypass that little uh, auto detection. And you'll see why in a moment. Now I can go to my settings, console type, NES Classic. Console type, SNES Classic. Now another frame of reference here is that we have two folders within the hash sheet directory. One is your games folder which contains all your NES Classic games. One is your games SNES folder which contains all your SNES Classic games. Now I have a backup folder in here that I pretty much keep anything like configuration, my kernel, Folder images, just anything that I mess with that I don't want to have a chance of being screwed up. So I back them up in case I want to revert to them. And I made a backup for my games folder and my for game my games SNES folder. And I'm going to cut these all right into there. You could drag them as well. And this will just make this video a less convoluted as far as doing this conversion from NES Classic to the SNES Classic. I'm taking all my SNES Classic ones and I'm moving them over as well. Now that these are all basically backed up and removed, I'm going to exit Hashi and reopen it to get a proper read on what's truly there. And I'm uh, getting a power on the system to see which cores I have installed once I'm done doing this conversion. But for right now, in my backup folder, I actually took a bunch of my NES Classic games and just threw them in here randomly. And I'm going to copy these directly into my SNES Classic folder and I'm going to do a conversion. Of course, I, got, I copied and pasted them instead of cutting and pasting, so I'm going to delete these. So those are all moved over. Now I'm going to exit hash and reopen. Then I should get a proper read on what's truly there now. Console type, SNES Classic. Copy these new games over. Sorry. <laughs> reopen. Now these are going to be the NES Classic games that I moved over to the SNES Classic. And I'm going to have to do a certain thing to the command line to fix them. This NES Catchy Catchy does not belong. So I'm going to go one by one and remove this command line. So it should be games forward slash in the folder name for the SNES Classic. The NES Catchy Catchy is a NES Classic perimeter and it does not need to be there. I'm going to go right down the line. I'm not going to need to do all of these. I'll just do a majority of them just to speed up this video. I'm just going to get rid of a couple of these. And I'm removing the NES Catchy Catchy. Then after I do this, I'm going to have to install the proper cores that run these. 
And I'll go over that briefly too. And of course, I'm going to do an audit to make sure that I have the proper command lines as I'm doing these one by one. And this is the manual method of doing it. There is a batch method of doing it as well. But once you guys become comfortable with this method, I'll post a video on the batch method of doing hundreds to thousands of these in very, very quick succession. And I previously used that when I was doing uh, NES compression a good year ago. But for right now, we're doing it the tried and true fashion of classic command line manual manipulation and it'll do its trick. So I'm removing NES Catchy Catchy. I did enough of these so you guys could definitely see the trend of how I'm doing this. And obviously to convert back to the NES Classic you just have to add the NES Catchy Catchy right back in. So you would just basically do the NES forward slash catchy catchy and just add it after games and before the folder name if you want to go right back from the SNES Classic to the NES Classic. And you may want to do this due to the extra 82 megabytes of flash memory that it has. So now I'm going to do an audit and make sure I have these all converted over. I'm going to go right down the line. Should be games forward slash in the folder name with no NES catchy catchy. So far, so good. Okay, now I'm going to install the appropriate cores and I'm going to power on the system so I have a Clover Shell connection and I can see exactly what cores are installed right now. I shouldn't have any installed. This should be a fresh install. I'm going to power on the system, wait for my little computer ding. It might vary depending on what computer you're using, but once Clover Shell does a connection it effectively tells you which cores are installed whether or not they're still in a user mods folder so right now I have nothing installed so obviously you're gonna need RetroArch you cannot run these other emulators without having RetroArch installed and this is gonna be the new 1.6.7 RetroArch and I'm gonna do a little brief tidbit on that once we have this installed one of the new little nuances of it now we need arcade games, which I have pretty much primarily designated to run with MAME 2003. So RetroArch and MAME 2003. So we have the arcade and the NES games covered. NES games do run with RetroArch, but RetroArch is also a, a dependency in order to run all the other emulator cores. Now we have Atari Lynx, and some systems require BIOS, others are just optional. For my BIOS... For the handy, which is what runs the Atari Lynx core, it's optional. But there are instances where you'd want to install these optional BIOS anyway. For instance, the Game Boy Advance one. If you install this and designate it to run with your MGBA core, you'll have less glitchy sound and better, smoother gameplay overall. And using the real BIOS does have a noticeable difference. And for PlayStation 1, even though the BIOS are optional, you might... Fine, like 20% 20, 20 of games may not load properly unless you have the BIOS installed, but the other 80% will. So, when in doubt, just install the BIOS for them. So, I'm going to install Handy. I'm not going to install the BIOS because I know I'm not going to need those. So, we're making sure I have every system covered. I have NES covered, I have the arcade covered, I have my links covered, but now I'm going to need my Mega Drive, which would be Genesis and Mega Drive Core. That would be the Genesis Plus GX Core. Now lastly, for SNES, and this gets a little bit tricky here. I'm going to exit here real quick. There's two different ways that you can do the SNES cores on the SNES Classic. It's simple on the NES Classic because there's only one single way to do it. But on the SNES Classic, due to the canoe command line when you add games, and I'm going to add one random game. I'm going to add less dirty and likely. And this is adding a standard SNES game and letting it convert over to the Canoe command line. So that does the Canoe command line. And there's two sets of SNES 9X cores in my core setup. If you use the default cores, you could only run Canoe command line. And if you want to run RetroArch, 
you'd have to go to the very end of it and type in double hyphen after space and retroarch. And if I'm going to these command lines here, the modules, you'll see the two sets there. The ones that say dual core could run on both the NES Classic as well as the SNES Classic and use the perimeter of the bin forward slash SNES, bin forward slash SNES 05, etc. But if you install the ones that have just the standard names, you can only run canoe games on the SNES Classic, but if you use these ones on the NES Classic, as I said, the cores are all merged to run with both the NES Classic and the SNES Classic minus one single core. That would be the RetroArch CRT filter hack. That's the only one that will not run on the SNES Classic. But for right now, we're installing just the dual core version. I'm going to install the 9x dual core version. And this actually is something I just updated. And it's more current and could actually support BSX set Teleview games such as BS Zelda and even the BS F Zero Grand Prix games. I'll beat the F Zero Grand Prix games. Do not start. They get stuck in the intro screen, so you need to actually patch them or run the patched version. So it gets a little bit tricky and I'm gonna do a video on that as well, but let's verify which cores I'm installing here. I'm gonna move this over to make sure I install the right cores. So I have my SNES 9X core, which is going to be used for my 9X standard command line, which is the Super Adventure Island that I added. And I have my MAME 2003, my Genesis Plus GX, my standard RetroArch, my Handy. So this should be all good to go. I should have every core specified. And if you look at my space there, 238.8 megabytes, it's good to install this extra space hack as well. Because there's 50 megabytes of unused NAND flash space that could be basically parlayed into and use your save states. And this really is effective using your SNES canoe core because the save states take up about 2 megabytes each. It's a ridiculous amount of space for a save state. But I'm going to power off the system and do my power and reset for a few seconds to get these to take effect and I am going to do a follow up video where I show a little bit more in depth of the the canoe 9x core dual usage and you can look at my previous dual 9x core usage to get a little gist of how that works but I'm going to do a follow up video on that as well we have four 9x cores to work and four of them work only with the SNS Classic and four of them work with both the NES Classic and the SNES Classic. It'll make more sense once I do the video on it. But we're going to verify that these work once these flash over. And for reference here, I'm going into my user mods folder while these flash over. And I'm looking at my SNES 9X cores. These ones that say dual core, like I said, they can run with the forward slash bin command lines. These ones here that do not have any designation to them can only run if you use a canoe command line on the SNES Classic and add a space and then a double hyphen retroarch. And like I said, watch my other video where I do this and it'll make much more sense, but I'll do a follow-up video as well. It's a little bit confusing, but once you actually do it, you'll see it's not so bad. So once these flash over... I just have to flash the games over and we'll test them out before I shut the video down. And if you guys have any requests or videos on how to do anything or such, just request away and I'll make sure it gets into one of my videos. So these mods are almost done installing and we'll see what happens. And I'm going to, of course, have to select these games and then flash them over as well. But it's very nice just being able to copy the NES Classic games into the SNES Classic folder and do this very simple manipulation of the command line by removing NES Catchy Catchy or the vice versa of taking your SNES Classic games and copying them into your NES Classic folder and adding the NES forward slash Catchy Catchy. So it works both ways. So the Super Adventure Island, which I'm running with the standard command line, I'm going to just designate as 9x just for right now to keep things simplified. And then the lesser than unlikely, I'm gonna designate this canoe. I'm 
and add the little prefix of SNES just to keep things intact. And I'm not too concerned with art right now. I'm just doing this test. Now I'm going to select all these games. Another thing to note is that with these more recent Hashi revisions, these original 21 games, they only take up 500 kilobytes of space now. Before they were actually copied into an extra part of your memory, but now they're just linked to like desktop shortcuts. So you're not actually using any additional space. So you can pretty much flash these every time if you want to and use only 500 kilobytes of space. Because if you have them unselected, you're still using the space, but they're just invisible to you. They're still on your system. So I have these set up, and I'm going to go into my settings, pages folder structure, make sure I have custom show folders manager every time, and I'm going to flash over. When I'm just doing a few games at a time, I like to just keep them my, in my unsorted folder, because when you have dozens of folders, every time you quit to the main GUI, it defaults right to the unsorted folder. So I just keep that folder permanently. So I'm going to flash these over. And then we're going to test these cords out. Make sure everything's running fine and dandy. So I'm going to switch over. And feel free to ask any questions if the, any of this confuses you. And like I said, sometimes... When you flash and turn the system on, you might not have controller input. So you can just pretty much power the system off and right back on and you should regain your controller right away. And we're going to test out these cords that I switched over to from the, from the NES Classic to the SNES Classic and make sure everything's running fine. So we're going into my unsorted folder and we'll test out main first and I have to show you the little nuance that we gain with this new RetroArch update which will make more sense to you once I do it. We're just going to load a random tugboat game with main 2003. Now typically once you're in the game you would hold up the you would hold select and start to go into the RetroArch options but what I want to do now is try to quit to the home menu sometimes you won't be able to quit to the home menu so what you'd want to do in that case would be pull up your RetroArch options and go to Quit RetroArch. So if you have a shortcut program or you're trying to push your home button on your controller and it's not working, just go to Quit RetroArch manually after you do Select plus Start. And after that, you should be okay on being able to quit with the home button or the shortcut. So we got arcade games working just fine. Now we're going to test out my uh, Super Adventure Island using the 9X Core, which I designated. And I'm running with the SNES 9X Core. And this game, I'm going to play for a brief minute because this really does have a spectacular soundtrack. And it really does remind me quite a bit of the Streets of Rage soundtrack on Sega Genesis Mega Drive. And this is what I consider kind of a, a cult classic game because so many other games overshadowed this. This is a true gem and one of the very best Super Nintendo games. And even though I've done silly videos where I say Barbie's the best game and Race and Aces is the best game, this truly is a phenomenal game and it's well worth your time to play. Gotta love that mo classic Mode 7. It has great gameplay, great soundtrack. I mean, the soundtrack is r quite exceptionally good here. Now, if you play Streets of Rage for Sega Genesis, this will remind you of it quite a bit. Almost, almost reminds me a little bit of that CNC Music Factory style music from the 1990s, too. Now we have uh, Lester the Unlikely, which is run through the standard canoe command line, and about 75% of the games run fine with the standard canoe line. We're going to make sure this one runs. And that one does not function with canoe, so we're going to ignore that one for now. Now we're going to test out NES. And we have it run through FCEUMM. Now one thing to note, if you get my core set, 
if you do Ben forward slash Nystopia or Ben forward slash FCEUMM, you could choose between these two chords. You might like one versus the other. And we're going to do uh, one more quick test to make sure we have canoe working once we test out these other chords. I'm going back to test out my Mega Drive chord, make sure that works. And this is my favorite game on Sega Genesis, by the way. Shadow Dancer has always been my absolute favorite on the system. It's in the Shinobi series. Great music, great gameplay, and it's always been my number one game on Genesis. I mean, Sonic the Hedgehog is great, but I probably played this game more than that. I mean, what's not to love about having your own pet wolf that you can stick on enemies just by holding down the attack button? Like that. And you got your magic just like in Shinobi. I mean, both the Shinobi and the Ninja Game series are excellent ninja games. Now we have one more to test out, and then I'm going to do one more little quick reflash to test out the canoe command line. We got links here. We're going to make sure that runs. This is running okay. We're good to go on this. And this is basically a port of the Arcade Ninja Gaiden. It's nothing even remotely similar to the one on NES, which is far superior to that. So we're going to switch back over and we're going to do a quick reflash. And I'm going to show you how I changed to two different command lines for the NES games. And we're going to add a proper canoe game. So for the NES, we're going to take uh, Double Dragon, and where it says Ben NES, I'm just going to make it say Ben Nystopia. And you got to do this with the core of my set, of course. And then if you want to run FCUMM, you could leave it alone, or you could actually change it, like so, to Ben forward slash FCUMM. I'm going to get rid of Luster Day Unlikely for now. And I'm going to add another game. Another SNES game that should function. We'll do our classic Three Ninjas Kickback, because you know that's the best game out there. And I'm going to let that have the standard canoe command line and prefix it with SNES. Then I'm going to sync them over, and we should have uh, Double Dragon should run with Nystopia. And the other game I just added, Three Ninjas Kickback, should run with canoe. So let's test this out before I shut the video down. Like I said, I'll do a follow-up video on the use of Canoe and SNES 9X dual usage, just to make things a little bit more optimally understandable. So we're going to test out Double Dragon 3 to make sure it's switched over to the Nystopia core. So select and start Mistopia. And one reason that some people love Mistopia is because certain games might have less graphical errors or collision and such. And if you go into your quick menu shaders, you have your own set of shaders that you could use for here. I'm going to go to a load shader preset and you have all these nifty shaders you could play around with. And you could go back to the stock one as well if you really wanted to. I mean, there's a 2x style, which is kind of like a smoothing thing. And it's real nice. So now we got the smoother graphics. But uh, I'm going to exit out. And we're going to test out. We're going to test out the other Super Nintendo game. Three Ninjas kick back, and this should run with the canoe emulator. Now, basically, if you, if you install a game using a default com canoe conversion and the game goes to C7, it's not supported. But if it runs, like 75% of them do, then you're fine and good to go. So I hope this video helps out and hope you enjoyed it. I'll be doing more videos to help you guys out with 